inside. Um, but it's a first Sunday, first Sunday of the month of March, and uh, we celebrate communion, which means uh, for those of you who are joining us online, if you want to participate in that holy sacrament, make sure you get some bread and juice ready for that for later on. And we're glad that you're with us. So because it's uh, first Sunday and we're celebrating communion around this table, we extend or share that table by packaging some bagged meals, which are then taken to the Sitco station for distribution. So we do that right after worship. I know that there are supplies already being gathered on the tables there, so make sure you stick around for that, and it happens really fast. It's over like in a matter of minutes. All right, in the month of March, uh, there are six of us going to Cuba in April. We are rekindling our relationship with our sister church after several hurdles um, that have now been overcome. We're very excited to go, and one of the things that we want to take with us is over-the-counter medications. And there is a list on the inside of your bulletin. We'll be collecting those things throughout the month of March, and there's explanation in there for why we're taking medicine as opposed to cash. Okay, so um, there's a collection bin right out in the narthex if you want to be a part of of that effort. That's one way for the whole church to participate in the mission, even though we can't all go. So please be a part of that. Uh, an update on the Savannah trip, there are very few spots left. So if you're thinking about going, please go ahead and sign up. And then if we need to, we'll start a wait list. Uh, let's see, Diana, do you want to make your way up here? While Diana's coming, I'll also mention to you, you'll see posters on the exterior doors for Church of God of Zion is having a Easter concert that is free this, this year, um, Easter evening. And so you can come and be a part of that. I think it's like 7 o'clock. You? Yes, you do. Trust me. Everybody wants to be able to hear you. Yeah. Am I on? No. Just give them a second. Lynn and Carl, can we use the microphone? I took it off of the, le the lectern. Yeah, I'll try okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. That's time taken off my 60 seconds. Um, <laughs> most of you here know about way back before COVID, they used to have day on campus at the Children's United Methodist Children Home down in Enterprise. Well, they're going to do it again. And they're going to do it on March 16th at 9 o'clock in the morning. And they'll take you on a little trolley ride. We'll have lunch. People can ask questions. You can see some of the homes that they have on the campus. It's really going to be a nice, fun day. Starts at 9. So if anybody's interested in going, you have to be here at the church by 7.30. It's quite a long ride, and we'll have morning traffic. So just there's a sign-up sheet out there with a red heart on the top, so it's clear from the other 92 sheets. Um, <clears throat> just go ahead and sign up, and if you have any questions, ask me, okay? March 16th, 7.30, in the churchyard, okay? That was 42 seconds. Oh, good job. All right, uh, finally... Just so you all know, next Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. <laughs> I gave you plenty of warning. <laughs> but also, uh, I have scheduled for you a special treat next Sunday as part of worship. Uh, well, our guest speaker will be a professional storyteller. So I hope that you will take advantage of that opportunity um, and be here for worship. So I invite you now to transition into a space that is sacred, where our entire being is welcome, and we lay it all before God on this altar and say, take me. I'm yours. Take me and shape me and mold me. Let us pray. Creator God, you call us from our busy lives to find knowledge and rest in this holy place. Center our spirits in your love. Open our hearts to your transforming word 
for we are ready to realign our spirits and remember your words and walk in your paths. Guide us in wisdom and truth as we seek to follow your word. Amen. Good morning. Let's try to not have things fall. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm still stuck on the daylight savings time thing. I cannot stand the spring forward. Can we be Hawaii? Is Hawaii one of the states that doesn't do it? Let's all live there. All right. Please stand in body or in spirit. Listen to the heavens and the earth. They tell God's glory. They have no words. Listen to creation. Now please join us in our opening hymn. It's in the United Methodist Hymnal number 77, How Great Thou Art.
Beautiful. Please be seated. <clears throat> Today's Psalter is from Psalm 19. It's a long in, so buckle up. <laughs> Heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next, and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there's no speech, no words. Their voices can't be heard. But their sound extends throughout the world. Their words reach the ends of the earth. God has made a tent in heaven for the sun. The sun is like a groom coming out of his honeymoon suite. Like a warrior, it thrills it, running its course. It rises in one end of the sky. Its circuit is complete at the other. Nothing escapes its heat. The Lord's instruction is perfect, reviving one's very being. The Lord's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. The Lord's regulations are right, gladdening the heart. The Lord's commands are pure, giving light to the eyes. Honoring the Lord is correct, lasting forever. The Lord's judgments are true. All of these are righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than tons of pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, even dripping off the honeycomb. No doubt about it. Your servant is enlightened by them. There is great reward in keeping them. But can anyone know what they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin and save your servant from willful sins. Don't let them rule me. Then I'll be completely blameless. I'll be innocent of great wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please join me in the morning prayer. Holy One, creator of the stars and seas, your steadfast love is shown to every living thing. Your word calls forth countless worlds and souls. Your law revives and refreshes. Forgive our misuse of your gifts that we may be transformed by your wisdom to manifest for others the mercy of our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite the children who are worshiping with us to meet me down here for the children's message. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Thank you for being here. I have a question for you. My question is, how do you know, let's say, when your uh, parental figure is nearby? How do you know? How would you know if they're in the same room? Nobody knows. This might explain a lot of things, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, like maybe you hear their voice, or their laugh, or do you ever um, smell them? Like some, you know, I can always remember how my grandma smelled. And she also had, she always had little mints in her purse. Um, so sometimes when I smell that smell, it reminds me of her, and she feels close to me even if she's not. Okay, so let me, okay, I'm not sure that we can progress to the next stage of questioning, but I'll try. Um, how do you know when God is nearby? Okay. Oh, so when you're hurt and you're eventually fine and you think back and you think, oh, God did that. Yeah. 
God made, also God made our bodies to be pretty resilient and they heal up their skin and stuff like that when they get owies. Did you say something about how do you know when God is present? You sense God's presence, yes. Did you say something? Oh yeah, Eli lost a tooth and Arya has an owie. Um, I thought I heard you say church. Did you oh, say in worship? I, Maybe I you can feel church. God's presence. Okay. Well, this has been very challenging questions, but I want to share a word from you from the book of Exodus, which is in the Old Testament. There's a song that we can learn sometimes. It goes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So Exodus is just the second book of the Old Testament, and I want to read this story to you about how the Israelites wanted to know if God was present. Are you ready? Okay, so listen for how they know. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages according to the commandment of the Lord, and they camped at a place called Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said back to them, well, Why are you quarreling with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, well, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Did you hear that? They thought they were being killed with thirst. So Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And then the Lord said to Moses, well, pass on before the people taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff, which would be a long stick, and take that staff with which you struck the Nile and go, and behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb. And you shall, listen to this, strike the rock and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. Okay? And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people and because they tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord among us or not? They asked, is the Lord with us? What do you think their answer was? The Lord is with us or the Lord is not with us? How did they know the Lord was with them? Oh, there you go. Okay. You've never seen that happen? I've never. You've never been like on a hike and dad just takes a stick and hits a rock and a, a spring comes forward? No. Yes, ma'am. I see that. He put, yeah. So they were dying of thirst and then God provided water. That's how they knew that God was with them. Okay. So you might know that God is with you by some of the things that you've said, by being healed um, sensing God, being in worship together. You might feel a sense of calm or peace. Or you might feel anxious. Sometimes that's God's presence saying, hey, you ought to do something. You ought to do something every now and then, Lizzie. Okay. So the important thing, though, for all of us is to ask that question, how do we know that God is present with us? What kinds of signs do we get? What kinds of feelings do we feel? so that we get better at noticing when God is with us, okay? All right, pray with me. Please get up. I think you're pushing the button. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for these children. Thank you for your presence with them. They are so wise in their young years. I ask that your spirit would continue to be with them and to teach them what it is like when you're present in their lives so they have no doubt that it's you being with them. God, we ask your blessing upon them this week in the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, can you help us collect the purple cans? Yeah, so what's the people's part? How do they... they yep, better shake it. Better shake those cans. I got it. Yeah. I don't know if Ron wants to hold it. Do you want to hold it? She let him put it right there, baby.
Just, just watch out, Aria. Woo! I still hear cans out there. Over here, she needs a can. Take a can, Aria. And just a reminder, this collection is going to um, the pantry at, is it Ridgeview? Ridgeview and Dr. Zinlet. We yeah, were last told of week, a need. Uh, last week we raised $89, and um, we've been counting it every week just so I know I can go get food immediately if, if I need to. Um, so thank you. Hey, children, can you say thank you? Thank you to the congregation, yeah, for your generosity. Okay. All right, let's have the ushers come forward for uh, the offertory prayer. Miss <laughs> Sandra is waiting there for you for Children's Church. But if you want to stay and hear the bells, you can. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Holy One, you shape our lives with great beauty. We bring these gifts with grateful hearts that you may use them to build your community of justice and righteousness. We offer you our very lives, knowing that you will lead us. Amen.
Please be seated. So I've read for you Exodus already, but you're going to hear a similar story. In the book of Numbers, chapter 20. This is Numbers 20. How many verses are we reading? Thank you. <laughs> May God's Spirit add to our understanding of these words. In the first month, the entire Israelite community entered the Zin Desert, and the people stayed at Kadesh. Now Miriam died and was buried there. Now there was no water for the community, and they assembled against Moses and Aaron. Then the people confronted Moses and said to him, If only we too, if only we too had died when our brothers perished in the Lord's presence. Why have you brought the Lord's assembly into this desert to kill us and our animals here? Why have you led us up from Egypt to bring us to this evil place without grain, figs, vines, or pomegranates? And... There's no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the meeting tent, and they fell on their faces. Then the Lord's glory appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses, You and Aaron, your brother, take the staff and assemble the community. In their presence, tell the rock to provide water. You will produce water from the rock for them and allow the community and their animals to drink. Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence as the Lord had commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock. He said to them, Listen, you rebels, should we produce water from the rock for you? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. Out flooded water so that the community and their animals could drink. This is the word of life for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen. The theological question I think the scripture is begging us to ask is the same that I pose to the children. What signs or evidence do we use for discerning the presence and the providence of God? What signs or evidence do we use for discerning the presence or providence of God? The Israelites asked it, and we still ask it today. What signs or evidence do we use for knowing God is with us? So going back to the story with the children in Exodus, if you were to read the subtitle in our Bibles, it says, Water from a Rock, which is pretty unique in itself. And it says the Israelites were dying of... They were dying of thirst. That is a rough death. Dying of thirst. They were grumbling against Moses and Aaron and Miriam. Who forgot to pack the water? <laughs> we were going out on this long road trip and you didn't bring water with you? Who forgot the water? Because water is life, right? But if you're packing for a long journey in the wilderness, you just can't not pack enough water for that kind of journey. 
a journey of life. That's a long journey. It's a far journey. It's a treacherous journey. And water is heavy. So we need a constant and consistent well source. So for the Israelites and their grumbling, my question also is, did their hearts get hardened from all those steps in the wilderness? Did their hearts of flesh turn to hearts of stone because it was so rough on them? Well, God tells Moses to take his staff, right, and take the elders, just the elders this time, and strike the rock, and then water gushes out so that the people will no longer be dying of thirst. Water is life, and therefore Israel is reassured that God is present with them in the water, in the rock. When the Israelites have what they need and what they want, then they believe that God is present with them. Did you hear that? When they have what they need and what they want, that's when they are reassured that God is present with them. So I'll ask you now to fast forward to numbers, what I just read, and the question remains, what are the signs and the evidence that we can use to discern if God is present with us? And providing for us. Well, the subtitle in Numbers is Lawsuit Over Water. So it's a very similar story, isn't it? Even the name of the deserts are so similar. Sin in Exodus and Zin in Numbers. And the place is called Meribah in Exodus and again Meribah in Numbers. So why the change in the subtitle? When I tell you, you're going to be like, oh. Because in between Exodus and Numbers, the Israelites received the Ten Commandments. Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> oh. Do you remember the preface to the first commandment? It goes like this. I am... The Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. I am your God. You must have no other gods before me. So even in numbers, yes, they are dying of thirst again and they're grumbling. Are their hearts hardening under the pressure they have seen generations pass in the time that they have been in the wilderness. Do you understand what I'm saying? They have had deaths and celebration of life services and funerals and wakes. They have lost a lot. And they're grumbling and they're tired and they are dying of thirst. Is it possible that their hearts are becoming hard like stones? Well, this time it's the entire community who's there, not just the elders. And Moses takes the staff and strikes the rock twice, and you know water comes out, and then they're sure again, right? They're sure again. Ah, yes. God is with us. Yes. Well, fast forward to today, and the question remains, how do we know what signs and evidence do we have that God is with us? What's your litmus test? How do you know, how can you say with assurance that God is indeed present in your life? Are we dying of thirst? Are we dying of loneliness and our thirst is companionship? Are we dying of exhaustion and we thirst for rest? We dying from being overwhelmed and we thirst for respite. What's the thirst that's depriving us from abundant life and possibly hardening our heart like a stone? 
Well, I say, I admit, sometimes I want to be like Moses and say, just, I'm going to go get my staff. Go get my staff real quick. <laughs> That's a pretty cool staff to have, don't you think? It beats any lightsaber, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but remember the first commandment. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, you must have no other gods before me. Even if our hearts are getting hard, and the weariness of the wilderness, this Lenten journey, or any time, I am the Lord your God. I can take that stone of a heart and make it gush forth life-giving water. I am the Lord your God. I do not want you dying of thirst. I will provide for me, for you. And you can test me. And you can test me. And I will show up. I will show up. So what to do? How can we be reassured of God's presence? If we can be, if we have any control over that at all, which I'm not sure we do. But I submit to you the experience of Mother Teresa and an ethic that she lived her life by, which comes from the New Testament, from a man that we know who hung on a cross like that. And at the very end, what did he say, friends? Anybody? I thirst. Jesus thirsted. So don't you think that Jesus resonates with your thirst, whatever it is? Is it possible that he was saying more than just, I need something moist to be placed onto my tongue, but I thirst for justice, I thirst for righteousness, I thirst for living water, I thirst for abundant life, I thirst for you to have a relationship with God? Is that possibly what he could have been thirsting for? And if so, and this is Mother Teresa's resolution, is that with each act of mercy and each act of grace that we are a part of, that we are helping to quench Jesus' thirst. Then we are assured that God is with us. God is with us. So my prayer for us today as we approach this table if your heart is hardened like stone, that you would bring it forward and let it be vulnerable for just a little bit and place it in God's presence. And then as you move about your days this week, that you will look for opportunities to quench Jesus' thirst by participating in acts of mercy and acts of justice and acts of grace. Small ones, big ones. If you want to be assured that God is present with you and providing, I'm pretty sure this will reassure you. I offer this in the name of the Creator, Sustainer, and our Redeemer. Amen. <laughs>
As we enter into the time of Holy Communion, I will be reciting a liturgy that, that you do not have a copy of, but if you want to uh, participate in the responses, if you don't have them memorized, they're on page 12 of your hymnal, and they are the bolded lines there in that liturgy. But I would invite you to participate with me, and perhaps not having the words in front of you will help you listen and hear them uniquely today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, well, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark on the waters and saved Noah and his family. You established an everlasting covenant with every living creature upon the earth. When you delivered us from slavery and made us your covenant people, you led Moses to your mountain for forty days and forty nights and gave us your teachings. You led us through the wilderness, fed us manna, and made water gush forth from a rock in the dry wilderness. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness also, and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, well, you raised him to life and presented him alive to his apostles during another 40 days, and then you exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and you delivered us from our own sin and death, and you make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, Prepare for the yearly Paschal Feast of your son's death and resurrection. You lead each one of us through the season of Lent for change. Change from sin and cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days, we may be gifted and graced to renew the covenant that you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took a common loaf of bread and he blessed it, and then he broke it and distributed it to each of his disciples there. And he said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as they sat at the table towards the end of the meal, he took the common cup. And again, he blessed it, and he passed it around the table, and he said, drink from this, each one of you. This is the cup of my new covenant that's poured out for you and for so many, for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may then be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence that we are children of God, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite those who are assisting to make your way forward. So in the Methodist Church, we practice what's called an open table, which means it's an open pathway. There's no barriers. Anybody can receive. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to be baptized. We serve juice and bread. If you have a gluten allergy, we have gluten-free bread for you as well. We serve by the process called intinction, where you approach with open hands. We give you a piece of bread. You take the bread, gently dip it into the juice, and then consume it. And you're welcome to stay here along the rail for as long as you like, and then return to your seats. This is a meal that transcends time and space. And we have already confessed our sin earlier in a prayer. I'm not sure if you noticed. But uh, <laughs> uh, we want you to come with your whole heart. And as much as you can, leave, leave all of yourself on the table. One loaf. Hold that. There
Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, what a privilege to sit at your table with all these beloved children and to imagine that we are no longer divided by time and space, but that all, that we, all those we carry in our hearts are present with us as well. God, you have blessed us with the gifts of bread and wine that have their beginnings in water in the earth. So we pray, God, that the blessings that you have shared with us in this meal will continue to nurture us, replenish our strength and our fortitude, to keep our hearts ready and willing to receive your revelation. Bless us, God, as we bless others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would invite you uh, to stand again in body or spirit and sing another favorite hymn of the church, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let's raise our voices in song. Friends, please uh, remember, we're going to stuff the bags really quick over across in Far Hall. Um, I have failed to really highlight the, the beautiful recycle receptacle that we have at the end of this aisle, but um, that is save, help me, Susan, shred for good. Shred for good. So it is a, a it benefits a local nonprofit, Challenge Enterprises, it is locked and secured, so yes, you can bring your confidential documents and recycle them in there, but don't stop at those. Please put your bulletin in there and any other paper you see lying around the church, recycle it. Just because Clay County is going to end curbside doesn't mean that we have to stop recycling here at the church. Um, let me send you forth with a blessing. My prayer for you is that you have truly felt the presence of God in this place, that you are reassured that God is with you and journeying with you on this Lenten 
time of discipleship. So may you take that presence with you into the world where it is most desperately needed and magnify it, multiply it, give it away. I send you forth in the name of the Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer. Amen. Amen.